or actually the extractor before you build your pool like for instance a 14 extractor 14 pool you'll have 100 gas to get the metabolic boost right when the spawning pool finishes similarly if you throw down your refinery before you build your barracks perhaps by one or so food you'll be able to start your factory right away and this was a fairly brilliant response by um books I always called them Z Pucks, um, but it's kind of fun to read it as though it's one word. Just go Z Pucks, as though it's French or something. Z Pucks. But this is something that a lot of Zergs have been doing regularly on two-player maps: is just stealing a Terran's gas. Because if you think about it, with two geysers, you're almost guaranteed to have one not taken in the early stages. So I think that's a reasonable decision. So a few um, links coming to the front. Good little tactic. Now this is what I would call a tactic. Um, anything that can be pulled off in like, you know, an under 30 second period, I just call, you know, like a tactic, you know. So for instance, if you walled off the back of this mineral patch and put some marines here to shoot at this hatchery, I would call that a tactic. If you take his gas, I think taking the gas is part of the larger, larger strategy, but taking the gas and then hitting the front with zerglings to split the focus of his marines, that's a nice little tactic. Never confuse tactics with strategy. Strategy happens over the course of an entire game. So, already we're seeing some nice responses by Dayfly. He's getting his Hellion out right away from one of his factories. He's getting a second one. He's shooting at this thing pretty quickly. He's not killing it obsessively. He's not having, you know, 10 more, or 10 more SCVs try to kill it off, but just getting it at a reasonable time. And check out how the early beginnings of this push flesh out. He gets one Hellion. See the Zerglings? We're already trying to wail down at the front, again, abusing that tactic. If the Marines are shooting the refinery, then they cannot both be at the front to shoot the Zerglings. So one Hellion pops out. And it's always interesting to note that one Hellion coming out before a reactor is something many Zergs are, are, are not as as equipped as you would think to deal with. Because, I mean, look at this. Over in, in, in Z-Puck's land, and we'll open up the resource counting station just you know for a little bit of reference. Um, Z-Puck is transferring a queen, has this second queen already up, is getting more drones. Notice that the, these four drones, notice how they have the same starting time. This is because these four larvae just popped off the hatch. And um, that's a, a pretty key timing for any early push, is knowing, oh my god, when does, when does the larva just sort of blah, poof, just hit the ground? That's a pretty good impersonation, I think. The blah, poof, do, 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 as the larva just sort of pop onto the ground. Um, that's an important time to know about, because then it will allow you to uh, know when to pull back, know when to be able to get in there. For instance, if I do a two-gate zealot rush, I know about when my uh, fourth and fifth zealot hit the zerg's base. That's right when the larva is getting ready to pop off, and I need to worry about a surge of eight zerglings coming forward to crush my zealots. So here we see that there are uh, four drones popping out from the four larvae. And this is what I was referring to when I said that zergs are a little less prepared to deal with this than they ordinarily would be with um, a more common early push. Because with a more common early Hellion push, we're actually waiting for the reactor to finish. So we have to do a little bit of floating action, but this comes out very, very, very fast. And of course, apparently dies very, very fast. But, um, looks like Dayfly, he got one add-on, and then he's proceeding to make Hellions. He's just finished this second gas. Looks like he's behind on food. Oh no, he's doing a good little bit of micromanagement here. Already has five kills on that Hellion. Ooh, very fancy. Can he get in there? No, but, you know, no reason to freak out and risk it too much. And this is something that's already a little bit unique. He's getting the double Hellions out on this tech lab. So, honestly, honestly, if I had to say an opening build, I would say that he was going to go factory, factory, and when the first factory finished, he was going to get a tech lab for the pre-igniter. He delayed this tech lab a little bit because his gas was stolen, but other than that, um, pretty normal. Oh, wow, a reactor going down as well, and here come three Hellions. This one returning home to repair. And honestly, this is, this is a little something that I think is a hallmark of a really strong player. Obsessively trying to keep every single one of your friggin' units alive no matter what. Like, really, really, really wanting to keep your units alive. Um, and this even involves, you know, like, let's say you, you had five Hellions and you ran back here and you did some shots. And you and, and he had a whole bunch of roaches in this area and there's a little battle. And when you got to here, you just had two Hellions that were at red life. 
A weaker player just sort of goes back and is like, they're going to die, and then comes back and builds some things. The good player always tries to get one or two extra shots off, might kill one, maybe two extra drones. But loving that little unit control by Dayfly. So he's going to poke into the front and do a little bit of damage here with these Hellions. At the very least, he's going to freak his opponent out a little bit. I think uh, he should have been shooting at that creep tumor a little bit earlier. And look, darting back here. Three Hellions, a critical number of Hellions as allows you to shoot drones in one shot. We're seeing a little bit of drone clicking going on there. This, I think, was a little bit over eager. Uh, as we can see, the blue flame just finished on that upgrade. But um, he gets that second tech lab. And, you know, this is something that I actually missed the first time. And by missed, I mean that I tried to do this exact push style and neglected to note that he was actually getting this reactor. Really important. Again, um, when I tried to do this build, I saw that there was an early tank Hellion push that came, and I became obsessed with that little middle push, that middle part of the build. And I could feel how weak I was um, in defense to a lot of early roaches and in defense to a lot of early counterattacks. So very, very important to note everything. And he is getting his command center. Just got it when he could afford it. But yeah, it looks like he's getting double tanks out. And then look, more Hellions. Completely straightforward in terms of how he's spending his resources. He's getting these tanks when he can afford it gas-wise. And in the meantime, just getting Hellions, getting the upgrades for Hellions, getting Marines, sending out more guys. And how's that siege tank upgrade? Not quite done yet. Opting for that pre-igniter first. I feel, again, as though Dayfly would have gotten this siege mode up earlier. I think that he just delayed this tech lab because his gas got stolen. I think that's reasonable. But I think that um, if his gas wasn't stolen, he would have just accelerated this build instead of done something different. He would have just gotten that tech lab up first and happily had a strong push. So, already some nice little tactics. Uh-oh. Uh, what's Dayfly doing? He is holding back. He is not getting too far forward. He is waiting here patiently. A lot of Marines. Wow, that's a lot of Marines. If you're just making out of one barracks, I can tell you right now, as someone who's actually done it, um, you only end up having four or five Marines. It feels like a stretch to try to get those six Marines up. Uh, or six or more Marines up. And we can clearly see the reason Dayfly actually could get this many guys out is because he favored getting the reactor out. And he spent a little gas to do that, but no worries. What he ended up doing was getting a lot more Hellions. Not a, not a huge emphasis on the tanks. Just three. And is getting Marines and Hellions. Oh my god, Marines and Hellions are an extraordinarily potent little composition there. And already Z-Pucks is severely up against the wall, not getting over eager with these tanks. It's these Marines and Hellions that are doing the aggression. And look at this. Look at that patience by Dayfly. Just poking up, um, building a bunker, and look, even having a little bit of issue with the siege. Now I want you to note how easily the siege mode deals with this. I mean, okay, that was that was that was that was retarded. I'm not gonna lie. Look at how easily he killed that off. I mean I'm even gonna back that up just so we can see that one more time. So here are the tanks actually physically unseaged, and here comes the siege. I'm not even going to look at the health bars. Just look at how fast the stuff dies. Oh, there went a few roaches. Oh no, there went everything else. Just three rounds of the tanks and everything's gone. So obviously with the recent patches, that's going to be adjusted a little bit. But um, still good stuff that Dayfly is doing. Now he was, um, he got that command center when he could afford it. Uh, is there anything else going on here? I'm trying to look around. He's getting an armory around the time his command center finishes. Okay, but as I'm looking around here, and you know I'm being a little bit uh, excessive with my looking, but I want to note that, yeah, there's really nothing else absurd or amazing going on. Just making out of two factories and playing very, very, very slowly. So what we're seeing right here is characteristic of really any push um, in StarCraft 1 and increasingly more in StarCraft 2. Whenever you want to do a push, a lot of times um, there will be the spot where you want to be, right? Which would probably be about here, is where he wants these tanks to shoot at these at this hatchery. What you'll normally see is the player will be able to sprint to a location like here, but then to be able to push from here, from this location where you can rush to, to here is a very long time. So actually follow my mouse cursor down to the mini-map. The amount of time it takes for Dayfly to move from these factories 
to this sweet spot here to there is going to be about the same time as it takes to move from this sweet spot all the way forward again. In other words, um, what, what you'll see, what you'll see a, a weaker player do is they'll get here, and they'll 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 try to rush forward really fast to get to here to kill this off. No, you want to play real slow. Notice how slowly they fly is advancing forward. This is a very slow push, and yeah, I mean this sort of stuff is happening, and he's. He's defending pretty well. Again, mainly Hellions, not really getting more than these three tanks. But watch as after he kills this off, what is he going to be doing? Are there any more tanks coming? No. He's actually just chilling here for the moment. Just hanging out. It's almost a little too dangerous to advance in front of this bunker. 